today, we're talking about the most influential badminton players over the past 10 years. The BWF has selected five women's doubles pairs. Two of them are from China. So when I think of Jarian Lang as a player in women's doubles, I think of her being more of the creative player, making the changes to the pace of the game and coming into the front court and really finishing shuttles very quick and efficiently around the front court. I think one of the things that I really admire about her is her ability to like play quite efficiently from the front of the court as well as the back of the court. From the front of the court, of course, she's like absolutely brilliant. She can read the game really well and she's equally tactful from the back of the court. So I quite like that about her. Chen Jing, when she played uh, alongside uh, Zhao Yunlei, she took the role as the playmaker. She was very, very solid, made very few mistakes and could open the opponents up, force a weak reply, and then most of the times her partner would intercept and, and uh, kill the shuttles. Chen Jing was more the hard worker of the pair and she was definitely more the designated backcourt player with her power and strength and yeah, a lot of kind of cleaning up the shuttle and just running around the court trying to get it back into an attacking position for them to finish off at the front court. I like competing against them. Of course, I've not beaten them, but it's always nice to compete against pairs who've done consistently well. And uh, I admire their ability to like play really well as a pair. I think Tian Qing's and Zhao Yunlei's influence in the sport of badminton um, is just reflected in the results that they have and how many titles and their ranking by the end of their career, even though they played quite late into their ages. Camilla Ritter-Yul is easily the strongest female badminton doubles player coming out of Denmark in recent times. In uh, the women's doubles, her force was a big, big uh, smash from the left-hander, of course, but also a really, really solid defense. At times when matches uh, were reaching a crunch time, she was not afraid to take the rushes towards the net and become a danger to the opponents. I think of her being really tall and quite intimidating on court with her height and her size and obviously her being a left-hand player was a huge advantage to their doubles pair and they really made the most of that tactically just trying to get the opponent to slip up and just hit it a bit too low to her or to her forehand on the left-hand side. She truly is amazing at reading the opponent. She's really confident at the net, really smart and very calm on her defence. So she's quite a tricky player to play against because I remember this one time that we played against her and she was at the net and I ran into the net and she played a deceptive shot all the way to the other side and I just watched the shuttle land there. <laughs> I didn't get to it but yeah, I mean, she's really crafty at the net. Christina Pedersen was, in my opinion, the tactical force in, in the pair. She had a really, really solid uh, serve. Both the flick and the uh, short serve were excellent. And uh, she was really good at uh, sort of controlling the game, sometimes picking up pace, sometimes taking it out. As a player, I think she is incredibly good at the net. She's got a super hard smash. And uh, she's quite intimidating, especially with her height. She's really tall. And um, I quite love how she can anticipate and move into the net really fast, despite the fact that she's really good at hitting from the back of the court. She also takes charge of the net quite often and she anticipates really well and rushes well. I think Camilla and Christina's main influence on badminton is that they were just able to show that European players can still compete with the top Asian ones and especially in women's doubles, they were one of the few pairs to have done this for so consistently over a long period of time and really show that you can have totally different strengths to the Asians and you can still beat them and have all these um, unique tactics and yeah, really cemented themselves as one of the top players of all time. So when I think of Mizaki Matsutomo, I 
Think of her being very crafty and quick around the court. She's petite, but she definitely still has a lot of power from the backcourt and she's so quick that she just gets to places where you wouldn't expect quicker than um, you thought and is able to do have a lot of options with how early and fast she gets those positions, coming in with a lot of angles and skills to um, really change the style of the game. Ayaka Takahashi was a fantastic backcourt player. Her work rate was absolutely astonishing. It seems like she could go on and on and on forever. So fantastic partner to have for uh, Misaki Matsutomo and uh, win Japan's first ever uh, women's doubles gold medal. So I've played Mizaki and Ayaka quite a few times and they are just trying to take every point as such an important point and they don't want any mistakes and they're really just trying to get into that position where they're so strong with Mizaki at the front and Ayaka at the back and really always trying to get into their advantageous positions. So you kind of change the game with the style in which the Japanese players play. They're aggressive, they are good at attacking, as good as their defense while playing. And uh, they've brought about the shift where you see them attacking quite often and attacking really strong, unlike their previous Japanese pairs who were very content with just defending. And I think with this pair, they brought about that change. And then you see all the other Japanese pairs now who are incredibly good with their attack, as good as incredibly good with their defense as well. Yu Yang was uh, one of the first players that I saw in women's doubles who had sort of like perfect technical skills. Her uh, stroke repertoire was just amazing. She was moving really well on court. She was almost impossible to pressure in, in the defense. That was really, really solid. And she didn't make a whole lot of mistakes. So there was no points to score on her. You had to go for her part. Yu Yang and Wang Xiaoli were very strong and um, quick and really good in the driving game in the women's doubles and that was their advantage in the game and they were just able to use their power and speed to really kind of push down onto their opponents and finish the shuttle quickly. On the world tour they played not for too long but the short time that they did play they took the women's doubles circuit by storm. They performed really well and they had a strong start and finished quite strong so it's quite amazing to see that in that short span of time that they did play together, they had some incredible wins. I love the confidence in which they played and they were pretty sure of their partnership. The most impressive thing with Wang Xiaoli is her uh, extreme power from the backcourt. We have in women's doubles some special players that has an exceptional power and one of them was Wang Xiaoli, probably one of the hardest smashers of her time. Really, really solid defense as well, and fantastic uh, playmaker in the combination with Yu Yang. She's really, really aggressive, hits very hard, and moves really well. And uh, she complemented her partner really well, especially Yu Yang, because she was great at the net and she complemented her really well from the back of the court with terrific shots and moving around really well to support her. So he is um, like her partner in women's doubles, one of the very versatile players. She has played with a number of different partners schooled by the Korean doubles system. She's mostly comfortable when she's taking the role as the playmaker on uh, the backcourt where she's very light footed and also has a solid defense. So she's a great partner for any women's doubles player. When I think of Lisa here as a player, I think of her being very strong and kind of low set in her defense. The girls are quite well built and they're very low and have super strong legs. She really uses it to her advantage and is very yeah um, intimidating on the court. I first noticed Shin Chung Chang when she was uh, forming a mixed doubles with Lee Yong Dae and I was impressed by her net player skills. She brought that into the women's doubles where she's also a versatile player, played with several partners 
in uh, most partnerships taking on the role as the front court player, but with a very, very solid defense and also a better uh, back court player than most other front court players. One of the things that impresses me about her is her ability to jump around on court, especially the back half of the court. She jumps and smashes quite often. And then you'd see her jump smash her, jump smash her and jump around and hit really well. She's pretty fast on court and aggressive as a player. I think uh, Lisa He and Shin Xiong Chan's influence on the sport of badminton um, has been integral for um, showing that Korean badminton players are really up there in the women's doubles and they were so consistently winning and doing well in Super Series and all the big tournaments. So I think they've definitely paved the way for the women's doubles in Korea.